Hi everyone, and welcome back to Melcy Math. Today, we are going to calculate the Fourier transform of a Gaussian. Actually, one of the easiest Fourier transforms to do in this short video today. We are going to use the definition as follows, the Fourier transform of some function of time, which is now a function of omega. This is supposed to be a weird f, by the way. It is defined to be the integral over all time of e to the minus i omega t times f of t. Of course, there are other definitions of the Fourier transform, some of which have factors of 1 over 2 pi up front, uh, and some of which have a positive sign of the exponential. These are fine. Uh, I'm just going to use this one. The result will still hold. So let's go ahead and just start computing what we want to do. So the Fourier transform of a Gaussian, which is e to the minus a some constant t squared, if we write it out, integral from minus infinity to infinity respect to time, e to the minus i omega t times e to the minus a t squared, which we can write as one exponential, of course, integral over all time of e to the minus a t squared minus i omega t. Now, apart from the i factor, um, some viewers should immediately notice that we could complete the square and proceed um, with the complex constant here. H however, we can just use the general formula um, as found in many tables of integrals. In fact, this is used pretty frequently in quantum mechanics. So we're going to skip the completing the square derivation this time and just use the following formula. We know that the integral from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x of e to the minus ax squared plus bx is none other than square root of pi over a, what it would be if there was no linear term times e to the b squared over 4a. You can derive this formula easily by completing the square. I think that's easier than trying to deal with some weird imaginary constant and try to complete the square that way, but it's up to you really. I'm just going to use this and make our derivation shorter. Basically all we have to do is plug in b equals minus i omega into this and our proof is complete. This now evaluates to square root of pi over a e to the minus i omega squared over 4a and of course uh, minus i squared is just i squared which is minus 1 so we get the characteristic negative sign of the exponential It's now square root of pi over a e to the minus omega squared over 4a, which you can notice is also a Gaussian with a different constant. Which should be surprising upon a first calculation. Of course, once you do it, it should seem obvious how it's done. This is quite useful in engineering in terms of the signal analysis since the Gaussian is a frequent signal that you would encounter. You want to know the frequency or the energy spectrum. You can do a lot more with this. I just think uh, it's good to know how this is derived. So Fourier transform of a Gaussian is a Gaussian. Important property of Fourier transforms I think is cool. Make sure to show your friends this at parties. Be like, oh. Did you know Fourier transform of Gaussian is Gaussian? No? Well, I'll show you in like three lines. Pretty cool. If you enjoyed this, want to see more math, please subscribe. See you next time. Hi guys, welcome back to Melzy Math again. I actually had one more short thing I wanted to show you about this result. An application. Um, I was so concerned with the video being short, I, I forgot I wanted to show you this really cool thing. So let's begin with what we just um, shown. We've shown that the Fourier transform of the Gaussian is equal to this um, function of omega here, square root of pi over a e to the minus omega squared over 4a. Writing this as a complex valued integral, uh, the next thing that we want to do is use Euler's formula. It states that e to the i axis 
course equal to cosine x plus i sine x, elementary high school result. And we'll see where that gets us. I think it'll get some more cool. Let's see. This is now h squared minus infinity to infinity dt e to the minus i omega. So the whole point is to expand this into cosine omega t e to the minus a t squared minus i times another integral over all space. Uh, this time with the sine times the Gaussian. And the first thing that we should notice is that our imaginary constant integral um, is simply an odd function. Since if we plug minus t into here, this becomes an even function, and this is an odd function here. So the entire thing is odd. And when, when we have a odd function over a symmetric domain, it's actually zero. So this t immediately tells us that the result of this integral is equal to this constant up here. So if you see a product of a cosine and a Gaussian, you can immediately reference this result on the Fourier transform to evaluate it as such. No tricks are required. And that's all I have for you today. Um, see you next time. Subscribe. Have a great day.